What's up YouTube? It's Ask the Young One with CreateHigherVibrations.com. I wanted to do a quick video on when you're divorcing a narcissist and you have children involved, or I guess it could happen even if you don't have children, the issue of the temporary restraining orders or the or the attempt of getting one or getting one and them being able to use it. Um, I know I watch a, another channel that talks a lot about divorcing a narc with when you have children, and it's, um, it's Dwayne over at uh, Dad Surviving Divorce who does a, an excellent job at explaining um, very well of the process of what he dealt with. Um, he's been very successful as far as I'm concerned, as far as Uh, being able to protect his his relationship with his children. I know it took him a long time, but he's done an excellent job and he, he's got an excellent channel. So if you, if you got children and you're getting a divorce, I would highly recommend watching that channel. Um, and it, but, it, but with that, by watching um, a lot of the live streams on that channel, the, the issue of restraining orders comes up a lot. And Again, it's kind of one of those things, if you haven't lived through it, it's going to be hard to, I mean, you could really just kind of put, you know, just have empathy and put yourself in that person's position to kind of maybe feel what they're feeling. But if you've lived through it, it's a little bit, it, it, it kind of gives you, a, I guess, a little more insight of what the restraining orders can do. Um, and I And I personally, I've lived through it. Uh, the last two years I had one on me um, and it was issued strictly based off of like I mean just pure manipulation lies um, my entire life I've never been accused of being a stalker or putting another person in fear or anything else in my life until suddenly I'm divorcing a narc suddenly then as you well know, <laughs> it's all about them and what they want. Um, so, and as you again know that when you're divorcing them, they are never accountable. They're, therefore, they can never be responsible for their behavior or their actions. And the temporary restraining order, if you get it placed on you as a parent, it takes away your ability to have a voice as a parent. It allows the other one to do whatever the fuck they want to do and you're not even able to protect your child or call them out on the things that they're doing. Um, because for one, you probably don't even know what they're doing because there's a restraining order and you have no ability to even ask about your child. Um, so for the courts that use best interests of the child, I'm really, 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 really lost on where that becomes best interest of a child. So anyway, um, I, read, I wanted to do a quick video on the temporary restraining orders and male narcs do it along as well as female narcs and you know some people actually go through a lot worse some people go through where the narc actually um, can get you so emotional to where you actually strike them and things like that um, luckily for me that wasn't my case and I didn't have to go through any kind of none of that but I do know that some people have been put in those positions and that's another because the temporary restraining orders and the the trying to provoke and the accusations or even because they'll even make false accusations of domestic violence um, i guess it just kind of depends on um you know what you know what hands leading that that horse that day you know depending on the person guiding the, the five-year-old narc and how to proceed in this divorce against you um, in my case, I'm pretty sure it was an unethical attorney who brought up the idea of a temporary restraining order so that it would a get build her custody case to be a little bit stronger. Um, b it would um, place a, a a dark spot about me within the court. Um, c it would basically. <laughs> And I've never seen attorneys actually make this advice, but I have no other option than to think that based off of the words of the narc. Um, I mean, it's just 
wow, I mean, yeah, for an attorney to coach a client to attempt to get rid of another parent is, I don't know, whatever. But um, narcissists are known, that, I mean, they're notoriously known for trying to get rid of another parent because what the other parent can take away some of that narc's control over the child. The other parent will, like the narc parent, you know, it, it'll kind of piss them off and feed at them if they see their child loving the other parent and they're not getting that same type of reaction from the child. Um, so again, that all ties into a lot of the reasons why they get these temporary restraining orders. Because as soon as they get that restraining order, it minimizes you as a parent completely. It takes away your ability to go see your child's first day at kindergarten or first grade or second grade or anything else. It takes away your ability to go see them at dance or gymnastics or anything else that they're doing. It takes away, um, a lot of times if there's not a court order in place, a parent is allowed, you know, to basically deny visitation or deny your right as a parent until there is a court order. So once the the or, or the protective order or restraining order is issued, it takes away your ability to contact the other parent about seeing the child. Um, all of these things are not best interest of the child. So when it comes to establishing, if if you if you get one put on you, it, it really. And like for me, this was a live and learn type of experience because as I was going through it, you know, in my mind, I know who I am. I know this is bullshit and I know why they're doing it. And it really just like it, it, it you really got to have a lot of self-control. And in the beginning, I can admit that I was not so easy to deal with because when you, I know when I'm like aware and mindfully and consciously aware that my child is being used as a pawn to get an emotional reaction from me to then use a temporary restraining order to try to hurt me through through the courts and through like arrest and different things when I know these things are that that's what they're trying to do um, you know it, it gets it that is a highly emotional state that I mean you got to be strong um, because even, you know, this is how hideous this was. Um, okay, you're not allowed to have contact with the parent or go anywhere near them or anything else, but you can discuss the child with them. Okay, well, okay. That's a fucking nightmare waiting to happen, and that was what I learned. So just in case you ever get one put on you and that is a part of it that you can discuss the child don't do it just you might as well realize that there you will accomplish absolutely nothing talking to a narcissistic parent when you have a child with them I don't know I know some of some people use email I I don't maybe you know and I know everybody's situation is different each people person has their you know own perceptions of how things you know and their situation has evolved but I know in my situation personally it is absolutely 100% pointless to even have an email conversation with the narc that is how hideous these people act um, again going back to best interests of the child when you have a parent get awarded custody of a child but refuses to co-parent and clearly clearly is trying to get rid of the other parent and has completely minimized that parent down to four days a month. Again, my question to you know goes through. This is all goes through my head these days because I'm aware. Like it, you don't. That's not best interest of a child. So um, again, it goes back to. I don't even know what it goes back to as far as where these courts come up with their best interest motto because taking away a child's fundamental rights and allowing another parent to do that is not best interest of a child. Um, but going back to the TROs or the restraining orders or POs as I call them, but um, 
it, it, it basically is used to minimize you. It's basically used to really just like, in my opinion, in my case, for me personally, it's being used or it was used to not only um, minimize me as a parent in the child's eyes, because, you know, where's daddy at when my first day of kindergarten? Where's daddy at when I'm at dance? Where's daddy at if I'm doing this? You know, all these things. I have no idea what the narc tells her. I'm sure it's something really nice, um, but that's what it's used for. Things like that. It's used to be able to triangulate people like in the court. It's used to make you have a dark eye through the court. Um, and the one thing about these, like you really got, like in my case, I know you can fight them. Um, what happened with me in, in that, and I was not happy at all, was it got combined into another hearing all at, like they were hearing two things at once um and basically my due process on this on this temporary restraining order lasted maybe four or five minutes and really honestly i don't even know when they went from the other thing into that so don't if, if you have one you're gonna fight it i would Ne never allow them to hear more than one thing in one hearing um, because that can that again was a request from the other side and I think now seeing things that's why they did that um, because it really took away the thing you know the time and the things needed to prove this restraining order to be false and so that's one of the big things if you're going to fight it don't let them combine you know a, a visitation hearing in with that at the same time because that again is hideous um also no i mean narcs are deeply invested on making your life miserable miserable so know that that's another reason why it's there um if you got a custody evaluator involved, not, and I'm not talking about guardian at items, I'm talking about a custody evaluator. Um, generally, here where I live, if there's a custody evaluator involved, both parents with the child would go meet with that custody evaluator and discuss a way to come up with a positive parenting plan that's best for the child. Well, what does a temporary restraining order do? If you have to go in and discuss things with a person like that, it separates the parents. So what that does, again, I think was a motivation from the unethical attorney, who I won't name, but, um, wow, anyway. Um, so what that does, like, you know, if you got a narc who's gonna go in and, shit and shift blame and project their own shit on about, on, you know, onto you, to this other person, and you're not even in there to be able to defend yourself against the lies. Whereas if you're in there together, the narc might not feel as comfortable going that route. So again, that's another reason why they will do it, um, to separate that. And the other reason is really like, it's just, it's made to get rid of you. It's made to minimize you. It allows them to, subtly alienate the child it allows them to if you you know if you don't get control over yourself it allows them to be able to have you arrested anytime you they feel like you have violated it and again if that happens over and over you you're going to be sitting in jail and if that happens and you're trying to fight for your child you're, it's like not good so again that's another big reason why they were doing it I think in my case, because in the beginning I was highly emotional and it was all driven from the things that I was seeing being done to the child. And and then when she chose to just keep the child until there was a court order, that really brought the emotions up. Um, so she was getting responses. So I think that was kind of like processing in their head that they would keep getting that response. But at the same time, you know, I was, I was really getting to that understanding point. I mean, we're like three years ago now. So it's, 
you know, but like back then in the beginning, that's that's the way it was. I mean, my little girl, it was easy to draw emotions out of me by using her. And that's what they were banking on. Um, I, I, I bet you that she probably made at least 15 to 20 police reports trying to get me arrested on this temporary restraining order. Finally, after a year of it, they finally did. Like, I had to go in and turn myself in, hire a, an attorney, cost another $2,000 for what? Because she didn't like a three sentence text, three sentence text that about basically saying to be a parent and we shouldn't have, you know, shouldn't have to argue over a simple asking you a question about a bath. Um, anyway, you know, that, that is actually going to be dismissed. Um, but they have tried <laughs> again to use other things to get that deal tossed to try to hurt me. And so again, you know, the best interest doctrine, where's the best interest in that? Um, because I don't talk to them. I have no need to talk to them. Like I said, there's, if you're trying to keep, there's zero co-parenting with an ARC. There's none. There's none. So you either go live life, do your parenting the way you plan to do it, or you can attempt to fight for however long it takes. I mean, it's it's really just up to whoever in that individual. Um, it's it's so scary, really. Like it's, but that's one reason why they do it. Um, what else? let me think real quick. Like what else was some of the stuff that I had to deal with through it? Um, I mean, some of the other stuff I had to deal with, which ultimately, like, they lived close. And, I mean, I had to deal with having a restraining order on me, knowing that they were trying to hurt me through trying to get me to violate it. I mean, they would, like, walk and stand in my driveway when I'm outside in the summertime to try to, and just, like, try to provoke. Like, it's just, it's so insane that somebody would do something like that. And then the other thing too, like, you know, if you got, if you need a protective order and you're in such fear of your life, but yet you come to someone's, that person's front door the entire time and you refuse to use a third party to pick the children up, that makes no sense. Fucking hideous. Like, who does that? But that again just shows like there, there was, there's alternative motives to it. I mean, we were separated six months before this was ever issued throughout my entire life including this marriage there was never a restraining order never a need for a restraining order between me and another person in a relationship like that um, there's never been physical there's never been a police call to our house there was never a fear of any of that crap so it was so that was a blind side that but again that's how they do things they blindside you with more false projection and so I did I did want to touch on that to some of the things that were used against me and then to pay attention to the due process hearing because I know some people you get like I mean, you gotta wait just don't let them combine those hearings uh, with anything else. I know in my case, I know, uh, you know, every judge and every court's different. In my case, I got faced with, you know, I had an attorney sitting there telling me, well, this judge, he gets, he gets a little annoyed with you if you keep that, you know, if, so we don't want to annoy him. So she like stops. I'm like, this is my life. I don't fucking annoy him. Annoy him. Like, I don't care, you know, because not annoying him got me stuck with a two-year temporary restraining order against me that I had to that then allowed everything that's happened to happen and it's truly affected the relationship with my child because that it has allowed the narc to subtly use certain little things to then put into the brain of the child and you know a child at that age, they don't know any different. They trust what their parents say to them. And this is what this restraining order has allowed to happen. 
and you know I'm still because I truly in my head and in my heart like people should not get away with these types of things but you know at the same time I'm not gonna allow it to just kind of like I, I can't let it run me anymore um, it ran me for a long time in the beginning but again it's used to intimidate you with it it's used to control you as a parent um, it can be used to like where I live she can text me call me do whatever she wants but I can't respond so I've had to deal with getting constant guilt text constant whatever she wants to say to me but I can't respond so it's used for that um, again it's all about control and ultimately to make you look bad into the in the court's eye because you know the stigma out there if you have these restraining orders against you you must be a bad person well bullshit um, that ain't the case um, so my thing is is it, these the courts need to truly start educating themselves and I almost think at this point in time especially with family court if it is not solely about the money and they want to keep using this best interest of the child doctrine then judges before ever sitting on a fucking bench need to go through psychology and learn why people act and do the things that they do because there's no way a judge can unbiasedly make a decision when you have one person that is sitting there shift blaming projecting being in denial um, Uh, 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 dismissing all accountability within themselves taking no responsibility within themselves and uh, and for a judge or anyone else in, in a family court system to look at another person that can never accept one thing that they are not perfect at that's a huge huge problem and it's scary that's scary because I can tell you that recently, to wrap this up, I sent a two-sentence text asking a question. A question. And in the mail, I got a three-page letter. And in that letter, numerous times it stated how, quote, I don't do anything wrong. So, that's the narc for you. They don't do nothing wrong. They are perfect. But... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, but with the TROs, I mean, it's it's seriously, like, take it serious. If you think you're dealing with a narcissist and you know that it's not a valid TRO or protective order or whatever, and you know that it, it's not deserving, um, certainly take it very, very serious and certainly pay attention to making sure you get your due process because that is going to be the key to it um, I'm, I feel fairly confident that that's why I got stuck with it because the due process was bullshit there was not a due process hearing four minutes three questions each on on this no that's not due process that's a he said she said and he went with the safe side because of the got to cover the judge's butt so um, in the meantime, I had to pay for that. My daughters had to pay for it. And anybody else involved had to pay for it. So, with the TROs, I mean, that's just a little bit of what, what they do. So, but ultimately, in my opinion, they, they're made to try to get rid of you. I mean, what, what's, the other, what's the other purpose of it if they're not trying to get rid of you as a parent? I mean, because it really takes you out. Kind of. I mean, other than your, other than your four days a month visitation that you get, but what kind of parent, what kind of parent can you actually be on four days a month? I don't know. That's, that's something I'm still trying to figure out. Again, how that's best interest of the child. Again, how child's children's fundamental rights are not seen. Um, TROs are definitely very serious. So, hopefully, this at least gets you to think a little bit about it. If if you're about, think you might deal with that, or if you or divorcing the narc, keep it in the back of your mind, just in case. Because I know, like I said, six months later after separation, came home one day, boom, I was sitting on my front door. I'm like, seriously? 
Um, and I know I about fell over with the statements that were written to get it. Literally, like, I mean, it just, it blows me away. Um, I don't know. Personally, I think there should be some lawsuits filed, but at this point, I don't know. I'm ready to just kind of live life. So, and that's really the whole key to life. These people will steal your happiness if you let them. And, it, and I know it's hard to get to that point, but you will get there and you will be happy in life. It's, that's the key goal, happiness in life. Um, so hopefully this helped a little bit and I appreciate everybody that watches. And again, if you're going through divorce and got children, check out Dad Surviving Divorce. Um, his channel, he, again, does a great job. So with that, I'm gonna jump off here. I hope everybody has a good night. Namaste.